Good morning and welcome to Central, everyone. Why don't you all stand to your feet and join with us this morning? Let's put our hands together. That's right, there we go.
find strength in you when we call on your name. God, your word says that you are a refuge in our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your promises. And today, Lord, I, we just uh, reflect on, on the shootings that, that just took place at the synagogue and all the lives that were lost, all the families involved. God, I just pray for your peace to just fill their lives. Your peace that passes all understanding, God. Like sometimes 
we may not be able to understand why things happen the way it is but God I just pray for your spirit to be poured out on every life that was affected God this world needs you this world needs a savior and we thank you that we serve a living God church I just want to leave you with this scripture from Psalm 76 74 verse 26 it says even though my heart and my flesh may fail God is the strength of my heart and he's the portion amen so uh, I just want to thank you for uh, singing with us why don't you go ahead and grab a seat amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Central this morning. Like I said earlier, we are so happy you're here. Whether you've decided to come out this afternoon to be here in the building or whether you're joining us online, thanks for taking this next hour to be with us. Uh, my name is Jen. I'm your host this morning. And I want to let you know that here at Central, we're really passionate about two main things. The first being introducing people to faith. So many of us have found Jesus and a relationship with him and had our lives completely transformed and we want to help others experience that as well so that's something that we're really excited about here at Central and secondly no matter where you are on that faith journey helping you to take steps closer and closer to Jesus so whether you're not even sure you're on this journey yet or whether you've been a faithful follower of Christ for a long time, we want to help you go deeper in your faith. That's really important to us too. So if you are new here, we would love to know that you are here with us this morning or joining us online. If you're online, just click new here and our online pastor would love to chat with you. And if you're here in person, there's a blue card right in front of you. If you could quickly right now take the time to fill that out, it says connect. It just lets us know you are here. We want to get you a gift um, just to say thanks for being here again in person or online and also just connect with you once over the next week to see if there's any possible way that we can serve you better so you can drop those cards if you're here this morning um, in the baskets that are gonna be coming by or you can head to the blue wall after this experience and hand it in to one of our friendly volunteers um, so thanks so much for coming this morning I'm gonna invite our host down at this time as we give together as a church family so like I said, this is something we do as a church family. So if you are new, please feel zero obligation at all to give. Um, this is something we do as an act of worship. Um, so yeah, don't feel any obligation. If you are a regular giver, the ways to do so are on the screen. Um, and something I want to mention that's actually happening today is at 6 p.m., so from 6 to 7 p.m. today, we have something called Encounter, which if you've never been to before, is an awesome hour where we get to experience God together. We take communion as a church family, and it's just a really different atmosphere than our regular Sunday experiences where we dig a little deeper, no matter how you express your faith, whether you're um, really creative and artsy, whether you're, you wanna sit and just think and contemplate, um, or dig deeper in theology, there's something for you. Our team does an amazing job putting this experience together. Uh, so I highly recommend you just decide to come out at 6 p.m., take that hour. You definitely won't regret it. It's a really good time to bond uh, with Jesus, to learn more, and also as a church family. I find there's just some really great chats and things that happen around Encounter. So if you could come out at 6 p.m. tonight, uh, that would be awesome. And lastly, something that's not till next year, but there's some important action steps this year if you want to be a part of it, is at Central we're also passionate about reaching um, outside this actual building. We have online, but we also love to go help people um, throughout the Niagara region, but also around the world. And we have some exciting missions opportunities coming up. So a missions trip is when you go to a different area of your country or part of the world and um, do some help them, um, bring Jesus to them. And so we are going to, in February, going to Honduras and Cuba, in March, going to Cambodia. And also, if you're in high school, um, CYM, which is our central youth movement, is gonna be going to the LA Dream Center over March break. So, so many great opportunities coming up. If you have any interest, or maybe even in the future, you're thinking, hmm, that's something I'm curious about, 
go to centralcc.ca slash mission to learn more. Or you can also fill out one of those connect cards, those blue cards, and head to the blue wall after this experience. And our volunteers would love to get you connected with the right person as well. So again, thanks for being here this morning. We're excited you're here. I'm excited for this next part of our series that we've been doing. So I'm going to direct your eyes to the screen as we continue our series, Created to Be. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Henry Ford said that in The Power of Belief. This idea that what you believe is actually really important. The truth is there's a lie going around in our culture that says you can believe whatever you want. And I suppose in some sense that's true. But belief shapes your behavior and behavior shapes your outcomes. So if you don't like the outcomes in your life, Maybe you need to challenge what you believe with your life. For nine years, the record for the mile was four minutes, one second. The reason was that it was thought to be impossible for a human being to actually run fast enough to break the four-minute mile. One medical journal actually published a study where a doctor said he thought that if someone did eventually break the four-minute mile... As soon as they crossed the finish line, their heart would explode because it was humanly impossible to run that fast. And that's what everyone believed until Roger Bannister broke it. The interesting thing about this is that his record only stood up for 46 days. 46 days later, someone else broke that record. And then for the next few months, it was broken 22 times. For nine years, the belief is no one can do it, and then all of a sudden, everybody was doing it. Why? Because they changed what they believed. And so what do you believe? And does it matter? Actually, it matters a lot. The Bible says it this way in Proverbs. It says, as, for as a person thinks in his heart, so is he. This idea that what you believe is actually what you become. And so again, I want to challenge this thought that maybe if you aren't who you want to be, or maybe if the outcomes aren't the way you want them to be, maybe you need to challenge what you believe. And so that's what we're talking about in this series entitled Created to Be. We, we've been exploring this amazing idea that the Bible tells us that you and I were created in the image of God. And this has incredible power if you choose, and it is a choice, to believe it. And so in week number one, we learned that we were created with the need for and the capacity not only to be loved, but to love, even when people are unlovable. That actually, if you want to win in life, you've got to learn to love. That love is actually the greatest medicine and the greatest weapon in our world that is broken. And it's the foundation for everything. And so you need to know that you were created to be loved and that there is a God who loves you. And then we learned in week number two that sometimes life isn't fair. <laughs> now, if you've had a perfect life, I'd love to meet you. Uh, we're going to write a story about you because I've never met anyone like that. And we learned that you were created to be resilient, that actually you were created with this ability to be tenacious, even in the face of the fiercest storm. And that those who not only thrive, but not only survive, but thrive are those who learn to be resilient. And then last week, GP did a great uh, message on being open-minded. That the truth is, things that grow change. Change is inevitable. It's happening all the time, all around you. And so you need to be open-minded to the new thing that God might be wanting to do in you. These are important things. But today, we want to talk about being intentional about your life. Here, here's the saying, right? 
plan to fail, sorry, fail to plan, plan to fail. It's this idea that if you don't live intentionally with your life, if you don't decide what you want to believe and why, you will find yourself in a desperate space, frustrating space. Here's the key principle I want you to walk away with today. Um, This idea that if you don't know who you are, I'm not talking about who your mama said you are. I'm, I'm not talking about what that jerk in high school said you are. I'm not talking even about what the mirror says you are. I'm not talking about what social media says you are. I'm talking about who God says you are, the one who made you. If you don't know who you are, and you don't know who you were created to be, and what I mean by that is that you're not here by some cosmic accident, that there's actually a purpose for your life. If you don't know that, the problem is you won't know how to really live. You'll spend a lot of time and a lot of energy on the wrong things, trying to live up to other people's expectations, your own expectations. And that's frustrating. That's empty. And there's a better way. The better way is to know who you are, to know who you were created to be, and then to live accordingly. And so the Bible reminds us in Genesis 1.27 that you and I were created in the image of God. Now this is really, really important. So I'm going to challenge a couple of your belief, the way you think about things and the way you believe, because if you can tap into this, this is what I honestly believe today. Inside of you is the potential and the power to transform not only your life, but the world around you. That you are here on purpose. And until you know that, you won't know how to make the choices to live well. So the first step in in really embracing this concept is to acknowledge that you were created with purpose. This word acknowledge is my word. Um, I took it from the biblical word, which is confession. The reason I took it from the biblical word, and, and I didn't change it, I just picked a different word to describe the same thing, is because we always think of confession as a negative thing, right? You've done something really bad, and so you confess, you own up, you fess up, you confess. And, and that's only half of what confession really is. It's true. It's true. Listen, let's just be honest for a moment. Put down our guard and just be honest. I know I'm not who I'm supposed to be all the time, and you do too. You don't need someone to tell you that you aren't perfect. You don't need someone to tell you that you have fallen short of who you could be. You don't need someone to tell you, although the world is very happy to do that for you, mostly out of their own insecurity. But what you actually need to know is that confession is not only acknowledging that you're not who you should be, but also accepting that there's a God who can make you who you should be. That's the power of this. That there's a positive element in understanding, no, listen, I know I'm not who I can be, who I'm supposed to be, but I also know that I was created with purpose. And so maybe this is the first time you've ever heard this. Maybe you're watching online and, and, and you've never actually acknowledged that you aren't who you should be. The Bible says that we are sinners, which simply means that we've missed the mark. We're not who God made us to be, intended us to be. We know this. We fall short. But there's a gift, and the gift is accepting that God loves you anyway, that God is willing to, to step into your life and give you that purpose, and show you who you really are. This is the good news that Jesus came to tell us. And so you need to acknowledge it. Once you acknowledge it, the second step is that you need to also then begin to dive in to your unique gifts and passions. This is the best part about being a human being. You are unique. You you are unique. The best part about being a human being is that there's no two of us that are exactly alike. Now, now the problem is, is our culture doesn't understand this. Because the first thing we love to do to people is put them in a box. We like to brand them, right? So we'll ask the question, so what do you do? Honestly, there is no benefit in knowing the answer to that question. There really isn't. It, it really isn't. There's, it's not going to get, you, maybe, maybe you'll get to know them a little bit better. But really, the reason you ask it is because you just need to know what expectation I can put on you and that you'll put on me. Oh, you're a, wow, okay then. Oh, you're a, hmm, okay then. We immediately do this. We label, we brand. It's, this, it's actually a sickness in our culture right now. We're trying to name and brand and label everybody. And when we don't find a label, we create a label. But what if God creates each and every one of us incredibly unique? Can I just tell you a little secret? I've never felt 
like I fit in because I don't. And as soon as I came to grips with that and celebrated that, it was liberating. I disappoint people all the time. Yeah, it's good, it's okay. Because <laughs> people's expectations are unrealistic. And I wasn't designed to live in your expectations. I was designed to be who God made me to be. I wasn't even designed to live in my expectations, thankfully, because some of them are pretty, woo, okay. So, but you need to know that you have a unique gift. And here's the problem when you don't understand that and when you don't live in it. You rob the world of your beauty. You rob the world of the unique flavor, sound, life that you come to bring. You were created unique. The Bible says that we were created in the image of God, and God is so multifaceted that there's a diversity and a beauty and a splendor in that, and you are unique. So how do you discover this? You see, this whole series was designed out of a thought I had. I, I thought to myself, if I wanted my kids, now that they're all adults, to know some of the things that I've learned that have deeply challenged and changed me, what would they be? And this is one of them that you need to live intentionally. You get to choose not only who you are, but who you want to be. And the only way you know that is if God steps into your life and shows you something powerful and beautiful. So how do you learn this? Well, actually, to be honest with you, you do it by trial and error, by serving. You know, it's interesting that I've tried all kinds of things in my life, things that I thought where I was really good at and quickly discovered I wasn't, and uh, things that I thought, oh, I'd like to try that. I didn't think I'd be good at it, and it turns out I was actually pretty good at it. How do you learn how you are uniquely wired? You try things. You test things. You serve. It's why for us here at Central, serving is a key component, N not because we want you to do our dirty work. No, we want you to be who you were created to be, and so you have the power and the potential of life in you to give that to somebody. And the only way you're going to know that is by serving. So serve. Another way is by getting into groups of people who love you enough to tell you the truth. <laughs> that means they love you enough to say, ah, you're really not that good at that. You know, like stop telling those jokes, dad. You're not funny. Okay, good. Thank you. I received that. Um, whatever it is, you need people who can encourage you and, and help you refine and explore these, these, these deep longings of your heart. What do you think about this? And so there's that way. But you can also go online. And of course, you know, everything online is true. Um, so you can go online and do all kinds of assessments in like, whether it's a Berkman assessment or a whatever, a personality test. You can do these things. Here's the thing. Don't settle for mediocre. Don't settle for doing nothing. Make a decision, a conscious decision to discover who you really are. But there's a point to that. It's not just so you go, wow, I'm really good at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty amazing at this. Um, no. It's so that you can third, evaluate how that can be used to fulfill your purpose. You see, the, the reason you were made unique and the reason you've been put on this planet is because this world needs you. Let me use an example, okay? This is a defibrillator. I have to say that very slowly because it's very hard to say. Defibrillator. And, and this uh, refibrillates your heart when it's not fibrillating rightly. Anyway, it, what this does is, here, here I, I actually had to look this up because I had no idea what it does. But here's what happens is your heartbeat actually has a current to it. And when that current gets erratic or it fibrillates, uh, that current gets messed up. You use one of these to shoot electricity into your heart to regulate it again. Now, that's an amazing machine. This, whoever invented this, I don't know who it was, but whoever invented this has saved many lives. This is a unique piece of equipment. There's nothing else quite like it, and it has a very specific function. But it's only effective if it's used properly. So I was thinking of other uses I could do with this. I thought maybe I could try cooking eggs with it. I thought maybe that, right? No, you can't, you can't do that. You can't use it ping pong paddles. You can't use it for that. There is a very specific purpose. And I was thinking, if that's true of a machine, how much more true is that of you? 
that you are unique. There are, there are ways that you are wired. There are ways that you think. There are ways that you are gifted that nobody else shares, and that's beautiful. But unless you understand that, you won't know how to use this. Like, if I tried to use this as a doorstop, and yeah, okay, kind of, but not even close to what it can do. And so I got thinking about this, and this is the profound part. You were actually put on this earth to save lives. You're like, whoa, back up the bus. Wait a minute, no, I, I'm not good at anything. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Do you know that some of you actually with your words have saved lives? You don't know it, but you maybe said something to someone you thought, oh, it was just a nice compliment or a nice thing to say. But in that moment, it transformed the way a person thought. It transformed then how they behaved. And it started transforming the outcomes in their life. You saved their life. Or you were there for someone in a point of need when they desperately needed you. Maybe they couldn't help themselves and you stepped in and you did something that turned their life around. You saved their life. Or maybe, maybe it was just in some random act. You didn't even think you were doing anything significant, but you were a part of something bigger than yourself. And even though you never met that little child who would starve without your donation and you worked through a major organization, you saved a life. Or maybe you just sat next to that person at work who was always angry. And one time you just asked their story and you realized why they were angry and you helped them see a different perspective. And that night they didn't go home and kick their cat. You saved the cat's life. But it has nine, so it's okay. Um, my point is this. What if, what if you were created in the image of God for something great and all you're doing is collecting dust. That would be a tragedy. So what we do here at Central is we consistently remind each other and encourage each other of who we were created to be and what God wants to do in us. And so I want to apply this to us as a church family because not only does this matter to you as an individual, it also matters to us as a collective. Whether you really believe this or not or know this or not, you belong to us. You belong to us, and we need you. When, when, we were, when my kids were growing up, um, technology was just kind of entering the scene, and it, you know, we started all having smartphones, and so we, we came up with this phrase. I don't know who started it, but it was awesome. The phrase was, be with us. And what that meant was sometimes you were too obsessed with your phone, and we were ha maybe having dinner, and so the aunt was like, no, be with us. Or you were watching TV and what was happening was more important than a story that was happening in someone's life. And so the answer would be, hey, just be with us. It, it became kind of this fun thing we would say to each other, but it's deeply profound. That we weren't, create, we weren't created to live in isolation. And the unique gifts and abilities that each of us have were, be, were given so that we could use them in a greater context. And I actually think God's image of that was what the church is supposed to be. Now, I know. Unfortunately, the church is not always what she's supposed to be either. I know that we aren't always who we are supposed to be, and when that happens, it can become really ugly. It would be like if I started using this as a weapon. But the Bible says that you and I were created for incredible beauty, and when we're together and we're united around a vision, amazing things can happen. I read a statistic this week of uh, those between the ages of 20 and 30. And there's, there's a major crisis. And I think sometimes we just want to ignore the problem and pretend that it's not there, but there's a serious problem in our culture today. And, and the problem is that people are losing faith in God. And, and I wanted to know why. And you can't just ignore it. It was like the time I, I rode a high pipe motorcycle with shorts on. I've told you this story before, but, but, it, but it's worth repeating. If you don't know what a high-pipe motorcycle is, the muffler comes up alongside the seat, not under your feet like most motorcycles. And I had shorts on, which is a definite no-no when you're riding a high-pipe uh, motorcycle. And I crashed into a tree, and my leg got pinned between the muffler, which is extremely hot, and the tree. And, you know, if you've ever peeled off cheese off of a pizza, yeah, that's, that's kind of how my... 
upper thigh. That's, we'll leave it at that. Looked like uh, it, was, it was not good. And so someone well-intended, uh, you know, they wanted to help, decided, hey, let's put a little bit of aloe vera on that, which is a step in the right direction, sort of, and let's wrap it in gauze. And then I forgot about it for two days. Now, now, some of you who know where, where this is headed, it's, it's not a pretty picture. So after two days, I couldn't really walk anymore, and so I went to the hospital, and by that time, my wound had literally healed over top of the gauze. The gauze and my flesh had become one. It was quite remarkable, actually. And so the nurse said, um, and she, I don't know why she said this, but she said, you're an idiot, and I said, thank you. Um, <laughs> I was trying to be very open-minded and, and resilient and loving all at the same time. And, and she said, here, put this in your mouth. Like, this is not a joke. I am not exaggerating this point. She, she gave me this thing to bite on. And I'm like, is this going to hurt? And she's like, oh, yeah, it's going to hurt a lot. And I'm like, well, can you give me painkillers? And she's like, no, you don't deserve it. That's what she said. <laughs> and, so, and so they began to rip the gauze that had been enmeshed in my flesh. Actually, God, this is, this is where it gets really gory. If you're, if you're faint, just, you know, stick your head between your knees and just start breathing. You'll be okay. They had to pick out cloth with tweezers. It's not a good idea to ignore a problem. You got to deal with it. And I think sometimes when it comes to the church or what we're trying to accomplish, we just think, oh, you know what? If we just, if we just ignore it, it's going to get better. And it's It's not. Statistics tell us that increasingly there's a generation that doesn't care or doesn't really know about God's love the way that we do. And so that bothers me, and it should bother you too. And it bothered me so much that I began to ask the question, why? Why are people not interested in God anymore? Why, why, are, interested, why are people not knowing this amazing, life-changing message that I've experienced and has so radically changed me for the good? And so I went online, because again, like I said, everything online is true. And I actually got mad. And I'll tell you why I got mad. I got mad because every article I came across was all about methods. If you just changed this, if you didn't do that, if you did this, if you, if you would just stop that or start this, that would do it. And it made me mad, and I'll tell you why. Because as, as I was reading that, an analogy or a metaphor came into my mind. Imagine you're in the middle of the sea, and a storm comes up, and the waves are crashing over the boat. And someone you love gets washed overboard. And so in a panic, you begin to tell everyone, like, listen, listen, my, my loved one, they're in the water. And, and the response is that they start arguing about the right way to do it. Some argue that, well, maybe we should throw a life rack. And say, no, no, it'll get lost. And, and, and what would you be your response? Your response would be, I hope, frustration, why are we arguing about it? I, if that was one of my children, I would jump into the water. I would do whatever it would take. I, I wouldn't care about methodology and arguing about this. And I think the problem is that it's time for us to stop arguing about what is right and wrong and just start jumping into the water. Because does it really matter that she sang worship on Ellen? Like, really, that's the biggest problem we have in our culture right now. Does it really matter whether you use lights or no lights? Does it really matter? Like, really? When we start arguing and God's kids are washed overboard. So you just need to know that as long as we're in this together, we are going to be intentional about doing whatever it takes. Sometimes you got to do something you've never done before, no one else has ever done before. Sometimes it takes tenacity and a vision and a dream and an idea because believing that just doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results is by definition insanity. The truth is that God is always doing something new and if you learn anything from the life of Jesus, you need to know that. That he came to do something new and powerful. And so together, we're asking that, that you'd be with us in this grand, audacious vision of seeing people know the life-saving power that only God can give.
because it matters. Because you matter. And because this region desperately needs you. And that should give you purpose. Jesus said it this way in Luke 4, 18 and 19. He said, the spirit of the Lord is on me. What, what did he mean by that? He just meant that he was so in tune with his purpose. He was so in tune with who God had created him to be. Well, he wasn't created, he was God. But who God had sent him to be, he was so in tune with that that he came because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Is your life good news? When people look at you, do they go, wow, yeah, I want, I want that. I want what you've got. If not, maybe you need to rethink what you really believe. You see, I actually believe, I believe this with everything in me. God works all things together for good. I actually believe that. I believe that when God gives me an idea or a vision, no matter how many people tell me I'm crazy or it'll never happen, I believe it's going to come to pass. I just believe that I can ask God for anything. And it, it happens, not always the way I want, but for good. I actually believe that. I believe that I don't need to be afraid, not even of death, because there is someone who has defeated death. I believe that. I believe that, and I live that way, and I hope it's good news to those who don't know that. I've also, he said, been sent to proclaim for freedom for the prisoners. You know what's interesting? I think a lot of times is we find people who are in pain, and we just add on to it. We, we judge, right? Or we say, oh, just smarten up or straighten up because we don't understand it. And Jesus actually came to set the, uh, prisoners free. The recovery of sight for the blind. And then he goes on to say, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of God's favor. I, I actually believe that we have been called to invite people into a life that matters. It's why it's our mission statement. I actually believe that when we use our gifts, collectively it multiplies, and we're able to see lives saved. This is why we exist. So, what can be done? Well, there was a time in history where they thought sticking a, an ice pick in your eyeball and swishing it around a little bit in your brain would actually help mental illness. It was called a lobotomy. They actually thought that that's the way you healed mental illness. There was actually a time when uh, they thought tapeworms were a great way to diet. Um, yes, they are, but there's an alien encounter on the end of that. Um, yes, th there was a time when actually it was even expected to own slaves. So what happened? Well, we found a better way. We found a better way. We realized, okay, this, this, this isn't working, and so we need to do something new. We need to do something different. We need to do something better. And my friends, I think actually it's time for us as a church to really dive in to the deep waters and figure out a better way. And it's going to take risk, and it's going to take challenge, and it's going to take some uncomfortable movement, but that's what it takes. We are committed to doing whatever it takes. If it means we need to change our methods, we'll change our methods. If it means that we need to do things differently, we will do it differently. Why? Because too much is at stake. And people need to know that no matter what you've done, no matter where you find yourself, there's a God who actually loves you. And you're not worthless and you're not a waste of time. And you do not need to be defined by your past. And you do not need to be defined by the limitations of your current circumstance. That there's actually a God who has a better future for you. There's a God who loves you and he's uniquely designed and created you with purpose. Live in it. That's what they need to know. And they won't know unless we tell them. And so we as a church are committed to that. And part of that is, is learning. And so when you came in today, we're going to do something together really practical. And you're going to help us here. To help us all. When you came in today, you, got a, you received a church survey. If you're watching online, um, there's a link that you can follow. If you'd rather kind of use your phone, you can text this number and use it. If you didn't get one on the way in, right now the hosts are coming down. Just raise your hand and we will give you one. Because we're actually going to stop right here and we're going to do this together. Because what you're going to do is you're going to help us begin to evaluate. Maybe there's a better way to do it. And so on this church survey, we're going to, um, again, don't assign your name to it, please. If you put your name on it, we won't, we will just put it to the side because we want it to be anonymous. We want it to be honest. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, just take, we're going to give you a four minute countdown and you're going to follow the instructions. Just check off the appropriate boxes. This is really important what I'm about to say because in the first two experiences, they didn't get this quite right. 
One is the top. One is the best. Five is the lowest. Okay? Um, so you're not rating the app where five stars are the best. It's reversed. One is your, your most ideal and five is your least. Um, and so we're going to do that. And there's also space for comments down here. We really do value that. So what we want to do is just take a moment to, to help us do this better. So we're going to start the timer right now. You're going to fill this out together. And then the hosts are going to receive it at the end of that time. And so just hand those to the hosts on your side. If you finished it online, thank you so much for doing that. So 10 years ago, we asked ourselves the question, what would it look like to take the unique gifts and talents and the abilities that make central what it is, and we could expand that? What, what could we do differently to make an impact? How could we 
get really creative. And so 10 years ago, we had a dream. Um, it was a dream to build something that no one had ever really heard of before. It was a dream to do something a little bit different. If I had a dollar for everybody who said, that's crazy, or that'll never happen, I'd be really wealthy. And yet 10 years ago, we had this dream to build a space that would ex be about our community more than just about our church. And so I'm really happy and excited to announce to you today that the wait is over. <laughs> Yeah. Just this last week, um, we received news that we have been approved. We got our site plan approval. We have a green light to build. The cool thing is that there's been so much work in the background that we already have the steel structure. We have everything lined up. And if you drive by York Road, you'll see the construction trailer. And hopefully this week, begin the trucks are going to begin moving in. These are exciting days for us. And I wanted to just show you, give you a, a kind of a quick preview of the outside. Now, I can't show you everything. Um, there's two reasons for that. I really want you to come back November next Sunday night. Uh, but next Sunday night at a town hall, we're going to be showing you the interior. But, but here's what it's going to look like on the outside. This is our, our new church building. Uh, and and I, hope, I hope you see that it looks, we tried to build something that the community would go, oh, I, I would go to that. Um, here's our view from York Road. Um, what you can't see that is coming in this next picture is that right in that grassy area is going to be a huge play structure, hopefully a water park for kids like a small one. Um, so, so what we did when we built this space, and, and again, I just, I just want to say thank you to those who believed. I actually want to say even thank you to those who didn't. Um, because actually through your questions and your challenging thoughts, it helped us form and shape this and actually drove me to even more tenacity to believe that this was possible. If you knew, and, and one day we'll tell the story of every miracle that had to take place for this moment in time, it would be amazing. But this, this building space is built, it's multi-use. There is not one single space that can't be used every day of the week. We, we began to believe and dream. What would it look like if we built something with the community in mind first? A space where they could come and interact and rub shoulders with us and meet us. And a place that we could actually leverage for greater good. A space that we didn't just open up once a week or twice a week, but every day of every week. And what if we could use a space to reach this next generation? This next generation that, for the most part, has not even, even heard about the God that we're talking about. You don't even know who Jesus is and what he came to do. That you don't have to live in bondage. You don't have to, to live in oppression. You don't have to live in, in uh, depression or discouragement or defeat. That there's a God who came to bring you victory. That's what this space is. It's not a building. It's a God space. A space that we hope that when people walk in, they will feel God's love because they'll see it in the people who are there. They won't just hear about it. They'll see it, and they'll see it on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, and yes, Sunday. But I want to thank those of you who believed in this dream. For every obstacle we've run into, God has just provided something even greater. If, if, you're, if your eyes are open to what's happening around the Niagara region, you will know that the timing of this is not a coincidence. Do you know that in 2021, this church will be 100 years old? It's also in 2021 that that new revamped downtown Niagara Falls is supposed to be completed. I don't know if you're noticing this, but house prices are increasing because people are moving back into the area. I don't know if you're aware, but God is already doing something and he has strategically placed you and I at this time in history to seize this moment for good. We are getting favor with the schools in our area. We are getting favor with government officials. We are gaining favor with businesses and sports organizations. We are gaining favor. Why? Because we were willing to be intentional, to believe that God actually had a plan for our church. Not just to get together and sing nice songs and feel good, but actually to be mobilized to make a difference in the Niagara region. And I want you to know that this is just the beginning. What I see, and I hope you see it too, is a church mobilized 
is a great vision to reach people so that that child who is struggling and discouraged can come into a place and be told you have incredible value. That the person who is struggling with an addiction or a bondage can come and find freedom. That the person who feels unloved and unworthy and is even thinking of ending their life can come and say, no, you're worth it, you matter. But not only that they will come, but every week we will be encouraged to go wherever we are, placed in our workplaces, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, in our families as dysfunctional as they are, to be a light of hope. And I was reminded of the words of Isaiah. In Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, the people of Israel were incredibly discouraged. They were in slavery and they were wondering, God, where are you? And why aren't you doing anything? Why does it seem like this world is going down the toilet? You've forgotten about us, God. And into that moment, the prophet Isaiah steps and, and I'd like, if it'd be okay with you, in the same spirit of Isaiah, to step into this moment and tell you the truth. Tell you the truth about yourself and your life situation. Tell you the truth about the Niagara region and to tell you the truth about our future. And when it looks like it's over, that's when God does his best work. When it looks hopeless, that's when God does his best work, when it looks like something is dead. <laughs> he brings things back to life. So I declare this over your life, over your family, over your finances, over your body, your mind, your spirit. I proclaim this over the Niagara region. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Can you see it? You see, faith is believing that there's a God who works all things together for good. Do you see it? No matter how hard your situation is right now, do you see it? Because what you believe matters. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And I believe that today we begin a new phase in a 100-year journey. And I actually think it's going to be better than any of us even expect. I think we have no idea what God is about to do. But it will only happen if we all do it together. We all take the unique gifts and abilities that God has given us and we make the decision to believe that God wants to use those things in us for his salvation to come to those around us. This isn't about a building. This is about a vision of seeing thousands in the Niagara region at least get the opportunity to hear this amazing message that their life is not over, that there are, there's a better way and this better way isn't a set of ideas or religious obligations. It's a person who wants to walk with us and show us that way. So I don't know what you see. But I see that kid who comes in and is told, you are worth something. And for the first time, he believes it. I see that teenage girl who comes in and she's been told all of her life that she's useless. And so she's just given in to the stream of circumstance that's sweeping her away. But she's told, no, you're, you're worth something. Don't give up. I see that young adult who is trying to figure out direction in their life and feels aimless coming into a space and being told, there's a purpose for you. You matter. You matter a lot. This world needs you. There's that married couple who is ready to pack it in. They hear it's worth fighting, come on. 
There's an older person who feels like they've been pushed to the side, put on a shelf, and they're told, we still need you. We need you to mentor us and pray for us and believe with us. There's, there's a place for that addict to find freedom. place where normal people like you and I get to just live life together and be better for it and get inspired and encouraged to go out to our neighborhoods and make a difference even if it seems really small and insignificant to us that's why I hope you see it too because we can't do it without you we can't so today, I bless you. I love you. Maybe I don't know you or I don't know your story. I might not even know your name, but I just need you to know I believe in you. And I, I believe that if we're all willing to do whatever it takes, we can see really positive change. And I'm willing to give my life for that. And I hope you are too. So, today I bless you with the truth that you were created in the image of God. I bless you with the truth that you are unique and that's awesome. You're different and that's great. Learn to leverage that and understand it so that you can make a difference in the world around you. Don't fit into this world's expectations of who you're supposed to be. You be who God made you to be. And may this world see him in you, in your greatest victories and in your biggest defeats, in your overwhelming joy and in your crushing sorrow. When times are good and when times are really hard, May this belief that there's a God who works all things together for good hold you. And may it be so powerful in you that others see it and say, I need that hope too. Because that's why we were created. To reflect our Father. And so I bless you to go from this place and choose to have faith to be intentional about what you believe because it matters. You matter. And this world matters. I bless you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.